hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about the Wayland Compositor and how uh, we are using it in the AGL project. First of all, a few words about myself. My name is Marius Vlad. Um, I work for Colabra on the graphics side of things. I'm a regular Western and Wayland contributor and I've been doing that for a while now. Under the AGL project, I've been involved in supporting and maintaining the AGL uh, Wayland Compositor uh, and basically helping out with anything related to uh, graphics. More to the point, uh, I'm going to talk today about um, what is the AGL Compositor and I'm going to take a look at alternative means of doing window management using um, gRPC, which is Google's RPC and how we integrated the AGL Compositor with different runtimes like Flutter and Chromium. Some of the past and current issues we've been having um, while doing that uh, integration. Now, what is the AGL Compositor? It's a tiled um, Wayland Compositor which doesn't allow users to move on their windows nor it allows to grab and resize them. And why a different compositor, why not using Weston? Well, rather than taking out an existing Weston shell or modifying or create a new shell plugin, it would be far more beneficial to be able to modify the entire stack if one would need to do that. But also because in Wayland, the compositor owns the entire graphical stack, being at the same time the window manager, as well as, you know, dealing with uh, everything that requires um, yeah, working with um, yeah, the hardware. While, whereas in X11, Xorg, uh, these components were are entirely separated. Now, at the same time, this allows the compositor to be, be actually slimmer than using some kind of intermediary of APIs, and in the same time, it allows other users to customize it as they seem fit. So there is no need to use IVI shell. Uh, instead, we rely on just FDG shell, which is far more used, tested, and implemented in all toolkits and runtimes. So we get that basically for free. Now, we leverage on LibWestern to abstract anything related to backends, outputs, and input processing. Uh, LibWestern has dedicated optimized uh, paths for scanning out the buffers directly onto hardware planes or ignore and discard occluded surfaces which do not need to be painted. So, and all of that happens internally. So, doing that it just allows us to focus on providing window management and functionality rather than just dealing with the nitty grits of having several software stack layers that we need to manage. In infotainment and in IVIs, we don't um, interact with the environment the way that we interact uh, with uh, desktop environments. So, how do we convey to the compositor how we'd like our information to be displayed? Furthermore, how do we tell the compositor which application to be displayed at a certain time? For that, we basically use a private extension, which is a Wayland protocol extension custom to the AGL compositor. And we've used two uh, private extensions. One is called AGL shell and the other is called AGL shell desktop. The first one, AGL shell, uh, is to manage panels, backgrounds, and perform window activation. Now, the client that implements this protocol, ideally, you should be able to handle uh, multiple top-level surfaces at the same time from within the single process, from within a single application. Now, this is rather important because I'm going to get back to this when talking about uh, runtimes and toolkits, and we're going to see that this is a bit problematic. And additionally, we have another protocol uh, called AGL Shell Desktop. Um, a protocol that is designed for all clients that would require to perform um, additional window management operation on their own service or to others. 
this diagram shows how the compositor stacks different surface applications uh, with the help of uh, this private extension. Now on the left is the shell client with distinct surfaces, each assigned in a different uh, Western layer. This is the Western layer is um, a structure maintained by LibWestern. And these layers are similar to IDI shell layers, so that they have different stacking positions in terms of the z-axis. Um, the application where they're going to be activated will be stacked in the same layer, but they're going to be stacked one on top of the other. The protocol extension allows switching between these surfaces by removing the current one being displayed from this layer list and replacing it with the one that yeah, I want to be displayed, activated at that point in time. Now, at the end of the day, why exactly do we need two different extensions? So, for one, we can let two clients manage the same surfaces. And here I'm talking about specifically the panels and the backgrounds. Allowing multiple clients to bind to the same protocol interface risk one client taking over from the other. So, we don't obviously want that. And secondly, we'd still want other clients to perform window management functionality. Um, for them especially, but also for other clients. Uh, we don't interact with um, the system the way that we would interact in a, desperate, in a normal desktop environment where we have other input devices like mice and keyboards. But yeah, having these two private extensions complicates things quite a lot and uh, has quite a few shortcomings. Um, and for quite a while, there wasn't really an alternative to doing that um, until we settled on the IPC, a global IPC, which we started to use recently in the age of project. Obviously, I'm talking here about um, uh, Google's RPC, gRPC. And I'm going to talk about this and how we transition to it on uh, in this uh, next part of my talk. So the AGL project decided to use um, IPC in the entire system and we, with it we just landed on using the Google RPC for it. And yeah, along the side it with the Protobuf protocol. Uh, there is a lot of pros and cons around it. Uh, it just felt the most suitable for us. Obviously, that's not the case to, to a lot of platforms. And for this particular use case, for window management use cases, this is more than suitable to, yeah, to use it. So to recap a bit what I've said previously, um, in terms of requirements for using these private extensions, so protocol require access to the Wayland connection and they're going to need to be implemented um, in each client and that's true for uh, yeah, AGL shell desktop protocol. In the same time the AGL shell kind of pro protocol didn't gain all those new features that I've been adding into AGL shell desktop like state events for um, Windows and we kind of need to bring this from AGL shell desktop into the AGL shell. Furthermore, um, having just one single protocol extension simplifies code handling quite a lot in the compositor. And because now we have gRPC, we can actually use gRPC as well. And we can actually use it from different environments like Dart and JavaScript. So, it seems we have a lot more reasons to provide a way to extract this um, Wayland connection and instead use um, a more easier API which can be used from all kind of uh, language binding. So basically, what are the steps for doing that? So we need to migrate some of the functionality from AGL shell desktop to AGL shell and then yeah, get rid of, get rid of AGL shell desktop. We still need to keep the panels and the background surfaces managed by a single client, so we shouldn't allow to, to allow multiple clients to do that. And rather than embedding this um, gRPC server inside of the compositor and dealing with all kind of 
yeah, multiplied ratios, we need to proxy this RPC using a helper client. Now, migrating this functionality from AGL shell desktop to yeah, AGL shell, I've done that already uh, with the version 3 of the AGL shell protocol. So we already have that in, uh, in main and master. At the same time, while doing that, I found an issue that uh, we do not know reliably when an application actually started and uh, is ready to present content, but the compositor actually knows that information. So the compositor can relay back that information. And um, with that, I would like to let the shell client control startup rather than having some implicit policy in the compositor, which um, yeah, still continues to do that in some of our runtimes uh, with um, the Qt uh, platform that's already present in um, master and main. Now, the second part uh, would be to proxy this communication with uh, a distinct client and rather than yeah, just adding this code in the compositor, and the way that this happens is that when the compositor will start, it will start this, it will start up as well this helper client. It will be found by the compositor. And this does two things. One, it implements the AGL shell protocol on one side and binds to the compositor. It um, yeah, uses the same uh, interface. And it, on the server side, I mean, on the other side, will just implement the server side of the gRPC. Uh, protocol. Finally, uh, we still need to have just one single client manage the panels and the backgrounds. And for doing that, I kind of added a new interface station. It's going to be in the same uh, protocol as AGL shell, but this uh, interface, uh, this additional interface allows to, to work as, as a token to be able to yeah, still uh, use the AGL shell protocol, I mean, the interface, not the protocol, uh, and in the same time, make sure we don't like mess up with the panels and, and the backgrounds. I mean, additionally, as an, let's say, um, a feature, any protocol updates that um, will happen at some point uh, will be basically, yeah, abstracted to the to the client using the gRPC because they won't really um, care about that. They don't need to update their own um, yeah, well and the implementation. And we can much easier modify the protocol and adapt the protocol if um, we wouldn't need to do that. Uh, here's how uh, now this work in progress looks like. Uh, there is a bunch of Stubs. Basically, these are like some requests I've been having in the AGL shell desktop protocol. Uh, they they don't don't they don't really have an implementation. They are just like empty stubs. We do have implemented the activate app, which activates an application, and um, I have uh, this uh, stream or this continuous events from the compositor when uh, different events from the different events, different window state events happen. These uh, events will be propagated to all clients that will uh, listen for this uh, application status state um, events like termination, like um, deactivation, hidden, um, and, um, and stuff like that. Uh, now, the last bit I would like to talk today is about uh, and ideally slightly related issues to the private extensions. Um, it's about the AGL shell. And it's about uh, the fact that um, it seems a bit problematic to handle multiple surfaces from one twin the same process with toolkits like uh, Flutter and Chromium. So we have more than one ecosystem, one more than one platform um, and AGL, and we let users choose uh, a toolkit which handles and abstracts the Wayland API and connection for that. 
But now the question is, how do we implement these um, flyback extensions? Where do we implement the shell client and how do we communicate from the runtime? And the runtime is going to be differently than C. It's going to be JavaScript Dart or C++. Um, so we have Qt, we have Wim, which is the web application manager, uh, and Chromium, we have Flutter. We can also have GTK and GTK, uh, just that that's not really used in HL, but uh, they can be used, and also we can use native Wayland and uh, C. I'm going to look a bit at each of these uh, toolkits uh, and talk a, a few words about how exactly we gain access to the Wayland primitives. For instance, for uh, for Qt and Qt Wayland, uh, we have something called the um, Qt platform abstraction, and this is not specific to Wayland. It does kind of the same thing to other Windows systems like yeah, Mac or Windows. And basically, the shell client can retrieve any kind of uh, backing Wayland primitives. Uh, we are interested in the Wayland surface and the Wayland output, for instance, and we need those primitives to control them. Uh, they can handle multiple surfaces at the same time, so internally how they do the repainting, they can do that. And obviously application are written in C and C++, so it, it's actually probably the ideal use case um, for implementing the shell client. Now, under Web Application Manager and Chromium, um, WAM is an application, provides application lifecycle for um, HTML5 application. I would suggest, yeah, watching Lorenzo's talks about uh, more about um, uh, WAM. Now, due to the way that WAM is built, it's built on top of Chromium, which is an adapted version of from um, WebOS. And here, not one is the Wayland runtime, the one that maintains the Wayland connection, but Chromium. So there are different um, stack layers to, to reach from WAM to YAM yeah, to the native Wayland connection. So we have no direct access for the Wayland primitives. Application obviously are written in JavaScript, so we kind of need to plumb different layers of software stacks until we gain, we gain access to the, to the Wayland primitives. And yeah, I've written here that we cannot, we need a web instance for a web page. Um, meaning that with all those above, we cannot really manage multiple um, surfaces in the same time, but at the same time, we have some kind of a workaround in place to, to handle that. Finally, with Flutter, uh, which is uh, yeah, our uh, newest uh, platform, we have something called the Flutter em uh, Embedder, uh, which is uh, a way to let users create their own embedder on different platforms. They have an embedder for Linux, they have one for uh, iOS, one for um, Android. So for AGL, uh, we needed to create a um, platform embedder, and we have that embedder. Uh, the good part uh, is that uh, this has native access to Wayland primitives, and it's the one that manages them. But the bad thing is that um, it cannot handle multiple surfaces at the same time, although that's obviously possible and much easier to, to do than, uh, than, than Chromium. Now, application on written in Dart, um, and from Dart, we need to go to the embedder and then to the, yeah, gain access to the Wayland connection and then to the compositor. And obviously, stream requires some, um, some kind of a plumbing. Now, in order to run more than one application, basically, we just need an instance um, of that um, engine or that runtime. And that's how we basically have multiple applications uh, uh, in the system. So what actually are the issues to do um, a kind of a recap? So basically, we don't really have direct access to the Wayland primitives. 
for instance, in one, um, management of top level surfaces within the same process. This is problematic for both Flutter and um, Chromium. And basically application code doesn't really have access to the William primitives and requires planning several software stack levels until, until we reach the, the William connection. Now, this last part um, should be actually fixed by using the Google RPC because um, application won't really need to gain access to the wireless connection. They just can yeah, use um, gRPC and just uh, be done with it. It'll be far more easier. But we still have the problem of managing multiple um, yeah, top level surfaces from between the same process. Now, how things are currently running at this point? Well, Chromium and WAM basically split the panel and the background into two different processes and they just orchestrate this startup. I mean, they need to be started in a certain way to be able to yeah, implement correctly the IGL shell protocol, client protocol. And for a while, the Flutter and Better just manages, well, manage the single um, surface, which is like the background surface. So a possible workaround for both front ends, as we have like an engine instance per surface, why not have multiple engines uh, per, uh, per surface, an angel per surface basically, and have like three distinct drawing loops, each for um, uh, each surface. Well, I've done that for Chromium and as a, like proof of concept, but obviously it's computationally expensive and it requires a lot, lot more work than just um, doing that. And yeah, a lack of interest. So just rather than forcing squared pegs into round holes and trying to adapt the toolkits and runtimes to support what would have been normal otherwise, uh, we now have a a new workaround in place designated in a way to designate a certain rectangle area uh, as the activation area for application and just have one single surface to manage rather than yeah multiple from within the same process now this picture shows a, a lot better than um, i've explained it words so on the left it's how we basically have multiple surfaces and on the right, what I mean for that designated area, basically we have the same surface, just the client will have to yeah, uh, have certain parts of it uh, modified. And basically we never occlude those parts. We just tell it, look, this background, uh, this area will be the activation area with all the other application will be uh, placed on top. Now we have this uh, implemented for um, Flutter, I mean, in our demo. Um, Scott Murray added this initially, and I've added a protocol update to have a request for doing that directly. Uh, I've also suggested doing that as well in Chromium, and I think we're gonna yeah, try to go um, as well with that to avoid having all these um, multiple applications just manage um, one single surface. Um, I guess that's it from my side. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, thanks a lot for watching.